listen, this is my 25, 26 year old black ass hanging out with all these 55, 60 year old rich white men. You know, <laughs> so he's an old white man. I'm a big black guy. Right. And so in the middle of the night, he's screaming, oh, help, help, oh, help. F FBI just got us. Run. He goes out the back or gets into a vehicle, takes off, jumps on a plane, goes back to Nigeria. And as far as I know, has not been caught since. Is, is in Nigeria, they said, with whatever, $20, $30 million, $40 million. God knows what that is in Nigeria. Hey, this is Matt Cox, and I'm here with Zach. And check out my channel at Black Zach. Zach's got a new channel, or a new channel, a channel. It's not yeah. a new channel. It is Zach's, new, but it's new. Zach has a channel. It's called It's Black Zach. And the link. the link is in the description. Also, um, the link to his cash app is in the description. Please go subscribe to uh, his channel. Also, he's got a bunch of videos. We've taken some of the some of the videos that we have we did months ago, and we've consolidated a few of those videos. The entire RDAP video is on his channel. So check out this this video. We are going to be investigating a credit card scam done by a university student at LaSalle. At LaSalle, that we're not quite sure what she did. Information about a LaSalle University student accused of running a scam to steal close to a million dollars. Please say this may not have even been the first time she's done it. Ms. Foster, good morning. Walking into court, accused of stealing as much as a million dollars. A far cry from track star Ariel Foster's reputation at LaSalle University. She won a couple awards for the school. She broke a few records. Now the 19-year-old faces a judge accused of faking transactions at her part-time job at LaVisa Jewelry Store in the Burlington Mall. And some of the ways they say she spent the money, a Louis Vuitton bag, plane tickets, a trip to Hawaii, and a Tesla. Police report says Foster eventually said she would take the blame, saying, I'm sorry for what I did. She is now out on a $1,000 bail. Live in Newton, Christina Hager, WBZ News. The line is, of, she's been accused of stealing up to a million dollars. I, I never understood. What does that mean? I think that what, what they're, it, it's kind of like saying, they're probably saying, hey, this was a credit card that had a $10,000 limit. You ran up $2,000 on the credit card. And they say that you had it, that it was a, a temp loss. Yeah, or potential of stealing up to 10000 you know how they they'll you know how they'll do that like with intended loss intended loss or you know there was the potential that they could have lost a million dollars yeah but I didn't lose a million dollars I lost two hundred thousand so, why are you saying so no? you're you're actually making three categories yeah, you this. know what you, you say that because it brings me back to a conversation we had with um um what was his name Michael Gordon John Gordon John Gordon yes and he had a conversation that cracked me up. About the intended loss, you know, because this is the bank robber one. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's what. Well, that's what. That's what got. That's what put me away. Like I would have only had ten years, except for intended loss, right? And there was an a, an account where it was only there was like fifty thousand dollars in the account, and we only took twenty. Right. But they gave us intended loss of fifty because. Uh, Right. So, so had I been more greedy or taken all, but I, it, because it was accessible. Yes. There, but, I, this, but I, but I didn't take it. Exactly. And that's what Gordon made a line. He's like, that's like going in the bank and saying, give me all the money. Mm -hmm. Right. And you walk out of there with a thousand dollars to go, but the bank had like 30 million. Yeah. Like they say, you, you intended to get, you intended to yeah, get all that the money. Poten potential <laughs> loss was 30 well, million. But, Cause you so could have gone into the bank. Potential, potential is the different whole. from intended. Right. Okay. I mean, do you would, would you know what the difference is? Yeah, I I mean, I agree, but I don't think his his so his intention was to it wasn't to get all the money in the bank because let's face it, he knew that when he got the thousand dollars, that wasn't all the money in the bank. You know, his intention was to get some money, right? But well, they they have it all twisted yeah. up in in, the, in language. The way the government looks at, it, they say, yeah, but the potential is there was thirty million dollars in the vault. He could have gotten that. 
which is silly because like, yeah, but he didn't even try to get that. It's not like he ran to the vault, ran in there and couldn't fit it in his bag and then left. Well, you were planning on getting the whole 30 million, but you weren't smart enough to realize you couldn't fit it all in your bag. Like I, I could, I still couldn't even make that argument. That's still just stupid. It's just like, <laughs> well, it, how much it, was your intended, your actual and intended? They started off at, they start off at 26 million. And then I argued and then they dropped it down to like, 20 million no 19 then they dropped it down to um to 15 million and then i i settled we settled that the the potential loss was 15 million and then we kept arguing because i disagreed because they were trying to give me like what the what the value of those properties were and i'm like you know based on what what the potential what what it was at the time and what it had gone up to and then so i we argued and i eventually got them down to six million and they just went went with the actual loss was six million and and see in my mind that's potential is the value of the 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 argument of the value of the the property right because like if the property at the time you you had something to do with it was worth a hundred thousand but now it's worth 150 you know the potential is like like the other 50,000 because had he took in control of it, that person would be out that. So that's the potential intended loss is like, give me all 8 million. Like if just because that money's there and you don't get all of it, doesn't mean it's an intended loss. It's, it's well, I, think the, in- I think, you know what they upgraded, they upgraded the definition of that anyway. Well, I was going to say it's like intended losses. Let's say, let's say there's an account, there's a credit card. It's got twenty thousand dollar limit. You go out and you spend a thousand. Then you spend another thousand. You spend another thousand. Then they catch you. They say, "Hey, the intent, the intended loss was twenty thousand. She was trying to get all twenty thousand. We just caught her first. She, if we hadn't caught her, she would have gone all the way up to twenty. That's what I think is intended. So, you know how we disagree or potential. So, I don't know. I think, I think this is silly. I think, I think, it's think potential. this is a horrible podcast. <laughs> Look, he's nodding. No, I mean, you forgot to do your intro. <laughs> Nobody listens to me. <laughs> That's, anyway, we'll do it at the end. This right, is fine. No problem. Anyway, uh, I, dis- I disagree because I think intended would be if I wrote a $20,000 check and they didn't cash it. So if you had twenty grand okay. and I wrote a twenty thousand dollar check and I try to cash it, listen, I'm just they, hoping this none of this shit ever comes up in my life again. <laughs> me, t- me, I don't, me I don't, too. I don't need. I don't need. Me to too. Hear, me I don't too. be sitting at a, at a table talking to a U.S. attorney going, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was just gonna be. Like, I, didn't, I didn't intend to get none of that. Anyway, all right, never mind. All right, no, what happened? So what, what they were saying is she had the potential. Uh, uh, of, of up to a million dollars. Yeah, I, I never. I don't understand. But she what got around five hundred and forty. That they, well, you know, they only that, gave her a, a thousand dollar bond. Yeah, but did you see the one thing? Uh, the second one said that it was five. Uh, the loss was five hundred and forty something thousand. Really? Yeah. Yeah. How would she only get a thousand dollar bond on a five hundred thousand dollar loss? Yeah, she's pretty. Yeah, that does make sense. <laughs> she's pretty. Here, let me watch. What? Watch, watch this. This is gonna trigger. She's pretty, and she's a girl, and girls just have it easier than guys. Oh, whoa. Yeah. See, look, did you see that? That all person. Look, that's, that's so incorrect, but I'm going to let you do that. <laughs> Isn't that considerate of her? I, look, I mean, what is going on with this? I said, consider it. Consider it. There's no end. There's no end. You're, 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 you're making. What's going on? Oh, here it is. Okay. Look, right here. This one is there. 547000 in credit card, right? Right. So, well, that's enough for a Tesla. That's enough for everything oh, that they say she everything. had. Yeah, easily, easily. So, yeah. So easily. that's why I don't understand the million. Because they're probably saying she could have potentially gotten to a million if she had maxed out all those cards. I don't know, bro. I, I don't know. I don't know what's happening. Oh. The point is, well, here's her scam. Okay. You want to get to, let's go. What's her okay. scam? Which, of course, she did, you know, which is bad. She was, it was, it was, she did it badly. Well, she, I mean, not that she didn't get some good money. I'm not saying. Well, you, you understand also, just real quick, you understand that she was using stolen credit cards to pay for her tuition. She was using funds from. No, they said they were looking at her. Oh, yes. Right. They were looking yes. at her. Well, you're for on a, the side. Okay. For yes. a separate scam. They were investigating her. The, the university was investigating her because she was using stolen credit yes. cards to pay for her tuition. Which is insane. That's ridiculous. That's like that, that. That's like, that's getting like a using 
stolen credit card to pay for your utilities Airlines. Uh, yeah, yeah. or your airline oh tickets. God. Your utilities, you wouldn't bring. <laughs> or any of the Do you remember other. that story? Yes, of course. <laughs> like, well, if you were smart, yeah. you know, I'd be like, hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Okay, so what I'm what I'm saying is that so she's been doing this and just getting away with it and became emboldened. But what she was doing, she was working for that. She was working for like what was it, a jewelry or an accessory place, like a clothing shop or something, right? And in the mall, and she in what was it, Burlington Mall? How many Burlington malls are? Is that like a huge company or something? Burlington, yeah. they do malls. Bur- or I thought they did coat factories, but yeah, they're Burlington gone. coat. Well, but there's a ton of malls called Burlington Mall. Yeah, I don't know where it's at. So. Anyway, she did this, and what she did was she would take your your credit card, your customer, and then she would ring up something for a larger amount. So this cup, she rings it up for 50 bucks, and you're like, whoa, 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 it was $15. And she goes, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. And then she would swipe her. She would go, I'll return the difference, and she would swipe her own credit card. And put it back on a credit card that she was in charge of, a credit like her credit card. And then her credit card built up a balance and she could spend that money as she wanted. And then what do you do? You get back and you're like, oh yeah, I see the fifteen dollar. Oh, it's fifty. It was fifty. Well, where's the return money? She didn't return the money. So maybe you dispute it with your credit card company and they just give you the money back. And maybe they don't even try and get the money back. Or they reverse the charges, something along those lines. And so it took a while for that to eventually catch up with her and get investigated and get her get arrested. But she did it for the, to the tune of half a million dollars. So over over how long of a period of time was that, I wonder? A year or so? Well, I mean, if if she did it on a consistent basis, I'm sure daily – she was making a, a goal of it. So her her thought process was kind of like the one I had in crimes is like, if I do this much every day, this is how much I have at the end of the week. Right. So obviously, like certain items she was probably tagging. But I knew someone doing that same scam. This is back early in my crime spree. When I was in jail, a gentleman was telling me, about his girlfriend that was doing that. And every day what she would do is she was, this is like late 90s. So it was absolutely undetected. But she would run the the amount and do a credit and just put it back on her card. So she would actually give them the product. So yeah. she would pay for the product, they'd let them go, and then she would just credit it back on her card. She just do a credit back on her card, and on on a daily basis, she was it's like about five five six hundred dollars a week. Yeah, which so, I, I mean, let's face it, if you're getting paid six or seven hundred dollars a week, an extra five hundred dollars that yes. brings you from the I'm barely paying my bills to I'm doing all right, like I'm making a couple thousand dollars a month extra. So, but it seems like she was in a high dollar wherever she was working, she was in a high dollar store. But it that that shows up pretty quickly. There, if it's high dollar amounts or you're doing a lot of returns like that, her drawer would be wrong. Consist. I don't know how it would be consistent unless like what you were saying, it's some, and, and this is what I'm thinking in my mind. So you, like you said, the cup is $15. So she charges you 50. So what she would do is she might return the $35 to your card and put the 15 on hers. Maybe, you know, know. some somehow another she was hiding it. Something allowed her to stay there on a consistent basis and do that because a half a million dollars is not something that like would happen over a short period of time. And it's not something that would happen where your boss wouldn't go. What the hell is how do you keep coming up wrong? Right. Like, how is it that you had this much in sales? And when I count up your receipts which includes your cash and checks and credit cards, you're short this money. It's some like that wouldn't go on consistently enough for half a million bucks unless you're able to hide it somewhere in the numbers. Right. Cause I, I guess so maybe I, I like, I could see like if, if somebody rang something up for me and it was 30 or 40 or 50 bucks off, like honestly, I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't even notice it. You know, you know what you just, you just answered it. So that's probably what she was doing. She was probably over. So if she charged you 50 bucks for this, right. you didn't notice it. And she was returning the 35 to her card, right? And letting you keep the $15 item. Right. And think about it. The, that what, would hide it. Well, what would be the worst that would happen is 
you get a bill, you see the 50, and you go, oh, that's right. She charged me 50. It maybe it just hasn't caught up yet. She did return it. I saw she returned it. Like no, maybe you're, you're putting the customer in on the return. Take the customer out of the return. You come to my store and you buy this cup and it's 15 bucks. I charge you 50. You take the cup and you leave. I do the return on my card for $35. You have no idea that I just did a $35 return. You just left. Right. You just paid 50 bucks for this $15 cup. That would allow me to operate week after week because right, but doesn't the customer get home at some point their bill comes in and they go man i i've got let's see, what, let me check and they start scrolling through and look and go hey i only spent 15 bucks at this place what's this 50 dollars charge thing is even if they do like most of the time that man that's a, that's 30 days later who knows like, like and then they, they might not even catch it yeah, if they catch it all, because if if my bill was off by fifty or hundred bucks at the end of the month, like honestly, I'm not tracking all that. Amen. And and if she's able, like I was telling you, somehow she's able to Especially do that. They, what if they're big? Like, what if she works at a place where it's every transaction's four hundred, five hundred, a thousand, eleven hundred? Like, if she worked at a high end boutique where women are paying three hundred dollars for a blouse, do people she still charge wear blouses? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. She just doesn't wear them. That's all. So. Yeah, so if you so these are women that are buying fifteen hundred dollar purses or two thousand dollar purses, she and she charges them twenty three hundred. Yeah, even if it's just a hundred, even if it's a couple hundred bucks on three purchases a day, that's that, that's a thousand dollars. That's fifteen to three hundred extra bucks five days away. That's fifteen hundred dollars extra, and let's well fifteen hundred dollars in a year, you'd almost have half a million. Yes, that's what I'm saying. So she would overcharge them and give herself. I was trying to figure out how she could consistently do it. And the way it is, she just overcharged the customer and then just return the the overcharged no, amount. Way off. Fifteen that's only seventy seven thousand. Well, it's way off. Seventy seven thousand. But how long has she been doing it? I don't know. Well, we look into but this. that that would that would allow her to stay there and there'd be no question. She would just have a lot of re- so they were just like, you know, you're doing a lot of returns. Yeah, I'm overcharging people by mistake. Right. What's the worst that happens is she probably, well, the worst that happens is what happened to her. But pretty much if your boss if at some point might just fire you, if you quit and just left, you might not. Well, I, so I would imagine, like you said, a couple of customers came back, but for her to get that much money, it's insane. She, she's been doing it consistently. She's doing it consistently. Um, I don't, so personally for me, I'm not a huge so I started off with credit card fraud when, right. when I was doing what I was doing, and I got caught every time to, to the point where there was one time when I was sitting in booking for those hours off of, after my arrest, and I said, I'm not doing credit card fraud anymore right? because that is the worst crime ever. That is the most known and it's the easiest to get caught. Credit card fraud. I just, I hated it. <laughs> so, um, so, and I've done it like where people, like you have guys that go to gas stations when women are pumping gas and they'll grab their purse out of their car and then they'll sell the credit cards to people like myself and I'd buy them and I'd try to use them up real fast, you know, before they turn them off. You know, all of that stuff, Credit card fraud it leads to you being running somewhere out of a store because you try to use the card, it comes up stolen, and you're like, "Oh, I gotta go." Yeah. <laughs> stolen? That's I'm so surprised by that. Bo- Let me call my credit card company as I'm running out the yeah. store. <laughs> Bo- Boziak has a story. He and his brother had they bought something like it wasn't even a big deal. It was fifty or a hundred bucks or something like a game some game components or accessories or something for some game. And they were in like circuit city or target or something. And they, and his, as soon as they swiped the, his brother was standing there and swiped the card or was, did Bozak swipe it? Anyway, they were both at the register and they're sitting there and all of a sudden the guy kind of glanced and then went up and picked up the phone and say, you know, I have a, I have a code gray and such and such. And Bozak said, I looked at my brother and I went, like this, and he goes, and he turned around and walked off. He's like, he goes, and he stood there. He goes, I thought he was behind me. Like, I just started bolting and got faster and faster. He goes, before you know it, I was really going. He said, next thing I know, I hear hit. He goes, I can hear, you know, 
his brother was wearing flip flops. So I can hear the flip flops <laughs> on the linoleum, the, the linoleum. He's da, 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 and, he, and he's like, run! And he shoots right by him. And he's, he's like, then I fucking take off. He's like, I go one way. The cops grab. His, he goes, he had a, one of his flip flops blew out. And he of said, he, and he tripped and he grabbed him. And they grabbed him and he took off. Bozi, I got away. Bozi, I got away. And then he said, like the next day, his brother was like, "Where were you?" He's like, "Well, he's like, what did you just? I turned around, you were gone when the cops came." He's like, "I gave you the nod." He's like, "Is there a nod? Did you have a plan before you go to the register?" I mean, you would think he's like, he's like, like that. And he said, his brother was just like, "Yeah." He said, "I turned around." He goes, "I thought you were using the phone. I thought you got like a phone call." And you were like, "Hey, I'm using the phone." Because he said, "I and I did do that." He said, "I did put my hand and walked away, thinking he was coming with me." Nope, just stood there. Dude. I got a code gray. Yeah. Yes, they, code whatever. I'm, I'm tell, yeah. Yes, I'm telling you, I I swore off of credit cards because they caused me to to run and bolt like three three times arrested trying to use credit cards. For, I, I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm not using f- credit card fraud anymore. I hated it. So listen, she would if if she did it over 18 months, she had to be stealing. Thirty thousand dollars a month over the course of eight to steal two hundred to steal five hundred forty thousand dollars. And, and see, that's what I'm saying. I don't think you're giving her her credit because, like you're saying, what if she's able? So I'm I, in my mind, she's got it down to a fine tune to where she knows exactly what she's going to overcharge for each item, and so she's consistent and and with it and working it. She's probably a thousand dollars a day. She probably a what, thousand. It would have been a thousand dollars a day. Thir- that's thirty thousand a month. That's thir- that's a thousand a day. Yeah. So you're wow. so he, hey, listen. And here's what I don't think she could get away with it. I don't think there's. I don't she think didn't. you can. Well, I, but I'm not for eighteen, 18 months. months. I don't think I don't think you can steal a thousand dollars a day from a store for eighteen months and get away. No, with it, it seems excessive. Hey, but it depends on how high end of a store though. But listen, here's the thing. So listen, I got I got a story. This is when I was a kid. We had a friend that worked at um, AMC theaters. Yes. Did I tell you this? No. So he worked at AMC theaters and we used to always, like, he always had money and we used to always kind of go like, you work like 20 hours a week at eight. We're like, why do you work there? He's like, man, it's good money, bro. <laughs> and we're like, what do you get paid now? He's like, oh, and this is back when like minimum wage was like $4. three. Yeah, yeah, it was like three ninety five, five, four twenty five. He's like, oh, I get paid four twenty five an hour. And, and you're like, how is that good money? And, and, and he, he was like, well, it's really like 20, 25 bucks an hour. And we were like, what? He goes, yeah, listen to this. So, you know, their whole, like, you know, they, they hire like, it's like McDonald's, like it's dummy proof. Like we can hire somebody, train them in, in one hour. We can train them on everything. Well, McDonald's has pictures of the food on the register. Right. Like, what, I want to fry. Beep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's how this was at, at AMC. He said, everything's done by inventory. And we were like, okay. He said, so they don't like there's, they don't, He's the way they do that is like you have, you get a stack of cups, you get 50 cups, you get 50 popcorns, you get 50 this. He goes, so when you're done, then you get another 50, then they just boom. Okay. We know we just sold 50. That's how they do it. It's just inventory on the actual items you're selling. He said, well, the way they do that is not by the syrup, not by the popcorn. They do it by the actual the container. container. And I, I was like, we were like, okay. He said, so what we do is. Whoever goes and grits the garbage, grabs the garbage to take it out, pulls out all the used cups and all the used um, uh, um, containers for popcorn containers. He goes, and we stack them up, and then we wash them out, and we stack them up, and we sit them back there. He goes, so we sit there, and whenever somebody comes in, and if they give you exact change, like, okay, it comes to $20, is and they pull out cash for, this is 20, well, this is 30 years ago. So somebody pulls out a 20, he is, we're like jackpot. You take the 20, you reach under, you grab one of the used ones, you get them the popcorn, you get the two sodas, and you give it to them, and they leave, and you pocket 20 bucks. He said, I mean, you don't have to do that very often. He is, for 20 bucks, he said, you do that. He said, you do that 10 times a night. That's a couple hundred bucks, because the popcorn, and even back then, was 15, 20 bucks for popcorn and a couple Cokes. Right. So he was like, he was like you, do that, you do that 10 times a night. He said, I mean, you're making bank. He goes, so yeah, of course I'm going to keep that job. He's, I'm doing great. <laughs> and he's like, and I let my friends in for free. Like they want to come in. I just go and I, I just go and I meet them at, the, know, back at the back door and open of the course. door. He's like, everybody, the whole store is in on it. 
So he said, and I was like, man, that's, that's, I go, Jesus, bro, that's fucked up. And he goes like this. I said, but you wash them out. He goes, we do. He said one time though, like I had the cups and everything. He said, I had the cups and the guy came up and he just, it was like five bucks for like, or $4 for like a thing of Coke. I'm like, oh yeah, give me a Coke. Uh, give, give me a large Coke. Here's four bucks. And he goes, okay. He said, I was like, he was, but I had gotten the stuff back, but I didn't have a chance to wash it out yet. So I turned around and I grabbed the cup. He goes, and in the cup was a chewed up bubble gum at the bottom of the cup. He's like, I reached over, pulled it off, saw the bubble gum, but it was $4. So I was like, fuck, boom. He said, I hit the ice, ice filled it up, filled it up with uh, with soda, put the thing on, boom, here's your cup. The guy was like, thanks man, and walked off. I was like, that's horrible, bro. He's like, I know, I felt bad about that. <laughs> Law enforcement often questions him, not because he's suspected of a crime, but because they find him fascinating. He is the most interesting man in the world. I don't typically commit crime, but when I do, it's bank fraud. Stay greedy, my friends. Support the channel. Join Matthew Cox's Patreon. <laughs> but that's the same kind of thing where, like, if you're in those stores and you can figure out how things work, you can usually figure out a way that, like, you know, how does it... Same thing with me and the... Me and the... How to make fake identities. It's like it just slowly... You get a piece here and a piece there and a piece here and you go, you know. Right. I did you, this and You this break and the this. system. Yeah. You break the system down. Yeah. There's a hole there. So... <laughs> That's all she must have done. I'm not. I mean, I just don't know. We could call her. We'll have to get her on the show. <laughs> Was she going to get probation? Yeah, absolutely. Five hundred thousand. Five hundred thousand. Never in, in. Never in trouble. No, she, she'll get pro. She'll get probation if she doesn't hire some high dollar lawyer. That she's in like, college. Yeah. The, she's, I, it, it depends on who's bringing who. Who's the backing of the charge? It's like my mind works legal, so it would have to be the store. It wouldn't be the customer. So if the store pushes, and if the, yeah. If the store pushes it, then she's gonna get. I don't think it's the. I don't know what it is. Not for a thousand dollar bond, because the store would come in and she would have multiple charges. It's not like she's got one charge, right? With a thousand, because she couldn't have like that. Would be like 30, 40 charges at least. At least, because there's no way she did all that on one transaction. So the fact that she only has a thousand dollar bond tells me it's one charge. They just kind of know what she's done. I think they're gonna probably come back. I don't I don't know and charge it. I I don't I don't fully understand that. I think it's I don't know. I'd be interested in reading the the, the paperwork. Because if it was she, if it was Okay. If How it do, was sorry. Go ahead. I'm, oh no I was gonna say um if it was federal like I could pull it up I got Pacer like I could pull it up on Pacer. You now. can pull it up on state. On state? Yeah I pull it up state yes all the time. Why didn't you pull why, why didn't you pull it up? You know what we were doing? Should have pulled it up and printed out the paper. You're right. I should have. Sorry, 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 Matt fans. A Matt fan. <laughs> um, what? Um, did, did I ever tell you about the? Did we ever talk about the guy, the the King of Helocks? Does that sound familiar? No. God, I forget the guy's name. He's been on like America's Most Wanted. He's from Nigeria. What he? Oh, Heloc, Home Equity, equity line, line of Credit. Yeah. No, tell me. So this guy, I think you have though. Yeah, this this was a guy from Nigeria who grew up in like the Nigerian um, phone rooms, right? Where they were doing like that. Uh, is it the four four one nine scams where they, you know, there's a there's a princess or a prince that died and his heirs need the money and all the money was in the barrister's uh, account and you happen to have the same name as the barrister that you died. Cash the check, right? So you can actually go to the bank in London and get the money and we can set it up so that you can, we can just have it wired directly into your account. We'll give you 10%. It's 15 or it's whatever. It's usually like, you know, ridiculous. Like it's $80 million. You'll get 10%. All you've got to do is this. And then you get so excited about it. And the next thing you know, they're like, if all you have to do, you know, but look, you, in order, you have to pay the wire transfer and that's 1% of this. So you have to send them like $8,000 or there's different variations of the scam. So, but he grew up in those rooms. Well, at some point he came to the United States, started working for a couple credit for like a credit card company, just selling credit cards, got in trouble or issued some cards to his own address, right. got in trouble in Los Angeles. I think he was in Los Angeles, got in trouble, got arrested, was in trouble. Then he started working for like, I want to say a mortgage company or something. 
anyway, <clears throat> he um. Like he's got a Nigerian name, I you I can't even say it's Tobiashi, Tobiushi <laughs> something. Anyway, he he ended up. So I was reading an article. And it was in I remember I think it was in Fortune magazine. It was called the Helot King, and he had stolen like it was like eighty million dollars is what they had um had uh, estimated if he had stolen. They said it could be as high as a a, a mil um a hundred million, but what he eventually figured out how to do was he would he would he would go through and find these houses that were worth you know several million dollars and he knew they had equity because you got a two million dollar house and maybe you owe 1.5 right so he would then turn around and he would figure out how to get your your um the person who owned the house's social security number it's public record back then well social security number and then what he would do is he would call the spoof app had just come out on phones. Uh, yes. So he would call. With a phone number. Right, from their phone number. So they think, so if you're at Bank of America, you think this person's calling from this phone number. And he would say, I work here. You know, I work here. Here's my home phone number. Here's, you know, here's my address. And and back then, you know, that they were giving home equity lines of credit away, especially, especially since the LTV was below 80%. Like the CLTs... <laughs> Is way below eighty. This is late nineties, right? Um, le- late late ninety. Well, no, it was early two thousand. It was still before the crash, right? So, what he did was, so he'd make the phone call. So the bank thinks you're calling from the house, right? So he obviously is the guy. He also has his date of birth, social security number, full name, knows where the guy works. So when they pull the credit, it all checks out, right. and and because it's a HELOC and it was below like an eighty or ninety percent CLTV cumulative loan to value, meaning the first and the second still aren't going to exceed ninety percent because of, the of house value, right? Because of that, they don't even do a full appraisal. They would just do a, a um, like an, either a drive by appraisal or a desktop review. So they have some guy in house look at the house, look at the comparable houses, and go, yeah, this thing's definitely worth two point five, and they would do the numbers. They say, yeah, okay, he's got perfect credit. So go ahead and let's close the loan. And then they would say, okay, well, you know, where do you want, you know, let's do the closing. And they would, they would do a closing. They would either like mail the documents in or have him go to a title company. And then they would just make a fake ID, have the guy walk in, sign the papers. And then they would wire the money to a bank account. He then had the money wired to mules in, in like China who would wash the, you know, this was where it got like, wow, like this guy went, this guy's amazing like i don't know how to get in touch with a guy like that so they wire the money they then wash the money take like five or ten percent and send the money back to an account controlled by this guy and some of the money would go back to nigeria right anyway this went on for forever they used to go and they would rent rooms at the w and they would get like a penthouse and stay there for two weeks and do nothing but he would just go out and get all the documents and they would do nothing but just make phone calls and do closings for like two weeks straight. And then they go on vacation for a month or two. Um, eventually the, the FBI got on to him. They knew he, that he knew he and the, his whole crew knew he was on to him there that, that the FBI was on to them. And at some point they came to arrest him. When he was at the, he was in Las Vegas at a casino. So they surround the, the, the or they're, they're watching the casino. And when he walks out and his entourage walk out, they get into whatever, some Mercedes or BMW or something. They surround the car and immediately they, they, they close in on the car, but it wasn't him. It was his cousin who Everybody said, look, they looked exactly alike. Like they very wow. much. So while they're in there, his girlfriend who was hanging out, who's one of the, he was still in the casino. She says like, like the feds just got us run. And of course that got her extra time. Right. Um, really? Oh yeah. That's what it was. It, um, um, uh, aiding and abetting no, or, uh, um, of justice, um, yeah, obstruction, obstruction of justice. of justice. So she sat there while they're pulling on the doors and stuff. She's texting him, telling him that the FBI just got us run. He goes out the back, gets into a ve- or gets into a vehicle, takes off, jumps on a plane, goes back to Nigeria. And as far as I know, has not been caught since is, is in Nigeria. They said with whatever, 20, $30 million, $40 million. God knows what that is in Nigeria. <sighs> 
And his father, by the way, who they said ran phone rooms, is actually a well-known politician and owns like uh, several nice hotels in Nigeria. Well, what's funny is like people here would be like, well, how's he a politician and he's running scams? From Nigeria, trust me, it's Nigeria. It's, it's the same. That's what's happening. It, it, uh, anyway, scams and politicians are one and the same. Yeah. But go ahead. So, so he's now, if I'm right, he's still back in Nigeria. I'm almost positive he's still in Nigeria. Um, but it was one of those things where it was like he was on the inside. He already had this kind of scammer you know, frame of mind. Totally. But he learned a little bit and a little bit and a little bit, and then he put it together, and it worked. And he blew it out. And yeah. then he got lucky and took off. Like most of the people got like eight years, 10 years. You know, they weren't like the mastermind. Like he was the top guy. So, yeah, <laughs> I can't believe you. I've never told you that story. Like I read that. I still have that where, story. Where did you see that though? It was in Forbes magazine. No, it was in Fortune magazine. And I'm telling you right now, it, it was, it, this guy's been on, he was on America's Most Wanted. He was on. Because I followed the story the whole time. I read the Forbes magazine when I was locked up. I was in well, the low. And, and, and it was, what's funny, that's one of those. Fortune. That, Sorry, Fortune. Fortune. That's one of those scams that like, because uh, like when I was on my run, I tried, I tested out three or four scams that I had seen on America's Most Wanted or when someone gave a scam, just like what we just did about the girl, I would try to analyze it in my mind and go, I wonder if we could do that. I wonder right. if we could do that. Yes, we I learned. I learned a couple of them from the the Nigerians. At at one point, when you were talking about the 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 checks, right? I was. I don't know who I was telling that to. So part of the what what I had going on, I had a bunch of track phones, right? Can you read this name for me? I'm sorry. That's his name. This is a CNN article. On Wahora. God, he's young. Yeah, he was a young black guy. Oh, I want that. Send that story to me. I want to read that. Oh, a, it, listen, this is. Yeah, he. Um, yeah, this is a CNN one, but there's one on. Uh, I'll send it to you. You can find the one on uh, the Fortune. king of home equity fraud. Yeah, there's the Fortune one. Is is it's a great article. Great article. Wow. So, so I'm sorry, what you were saying? No, no. What what I would do is I would I would copy it anyway. Uh, I had a couple of run-ins with the Nigerians. So you know how you were saying that they would tell you to deposit a fake money order in your account and send us 10%? Right. Oh, listen, I was... I mean, that's one of... Like, there's so many variations. Oh, I, I was... I I called them actively. Right, <laughs> trying to figure it out? No, I wanted them... Because of what I was doing, I had bank accounts in people's names and I had phones. Right. And when I saw that on the, the television and I, I, you know what it was? Somebody had told me that I just, you know, I just got this offer. I think I'd heard from one or two people. I just got this offer where they're telling me to deposit a certain check in my account. I got a text message or a phone call about that. Right. Right. Somebody had told me that and it just kind of went, went blue in one ear and out the other. And then I was watching that on, on the news. And I remember looking, looking at um, Tara and saying, I go, I go, we should do that. I go, we, what, do we, what do we got, 30, 40 account, bank accounts? Right. I go, I would love to get one of those $20,000 checks. She goes, would you, would you give them their, because um, they, they wanted me to keep 10% or whatever it was. I'm like, no, I'm keeping all their money. Yeah. <laughs> like, why, why would I pay you? You're scamming me. Right. I'm keeping all your crap. You know, so we actually got, so they, they must have got on to us because we pursued them. And we actually got like four or five checks and I just never paid them. Like we, from different, like we, we had a room full of cell phones. I'll never. <laughs> They're calling up, asking for yes. the money. And you're like, you're a criminal. <laughs> yes. You. This like is you, wrong. You tell me, oh, I got one of those calls about a Nigerian. And then I'd call you up. I go, hey, find that number. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give you 200 bucks. Find it. You'd find a number. And I call. So once I start reaching out, like I'd reach out to him from different phones. Saying, oh, yes. You know, I got, you know, I started reaching out to them, and all of a sudden they're like, "Hey, somebody's ripping us off down there." <laughs> <laughs> These damn Americans. <laughs> I started stealing. Yeah, I wouldn't give them anything. They call back, and I go, "Oh, I did get the money. I'm gonna send it." You know, they'd be like, "Ash hole." You know, they'd be yeah. mad as hell. <laughs> like, 
what are, what's wrong with you, man? Send me my damn money. You know, they, <laughs> <laughs> giving you a hard time. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I was gonna say, um, you know what's funny is like those scams. Like they always seem well, they're not harmless, obviously. You know, they're no. victims, but. There was actually, there's actually a case where a guy was furious and he actually flew like to Nigeria. Like they got him over and over again. When he finally realized he had lost like 40 grand or something outrageous, he like flew to Nigeria to track the people down and they killed him. They killed the guy? Killed or the, the guy? No, that's the, the victim from like the America or the UK or wherever they got him. He killed flew him. to Nigeria, tracked down where the phone room was. Like went to the police department. They're not helping you. They're in on it, and and actually ended up getting killed. So it was that, or it was the bank scam, where they do the the bank where you fly in and give them the money. It was one of those two. It was still in Nigeria where you went in. There's there's that one. There's one scam where they you bring money and you go to like a bank, right? And the they have the money. Like they they show you like ten million dollars. They're like, this is yours, but you have to pay them whatever up front. And the guy was like, oh my god! And so then he pays over like a hundred thousand dollars. And then like the next day, he goes to the bank to get the money. Right. And the bank manager is like, I'm sorry. <laughs> Same guy he talked to. I'm. Hey, what are you talking you, about? You are who? Yeah. <laughs> I'm here to get my hundred million dollars. Hundred million dollars. We don't have hundred million dollars. What are you talking about? Yeah. Who and are then you? then he calls the police, and the police drag him away. <laughs> and they're like, well, they're like, you know, and they're like, this is, oh my God, what's going on? I'm, I mean, you're going to what? Call the FBI? Yeah. It's Nigeria, bro. Yeah. Like, we're, I'm in on it. You're just an American. Amen. Amen. So, it, there, there was, there, there like was a war, I guess, some kind of financial, because they were going at it. And this is the 90s. Right. This is specifically, I remember in the 90s, they were all over the place, Nigerian scams. Working out of Houston. Still, listen, them and what is it? Is it the Indians or Pakistanis that that oh, yeah. are are also doing the scams? The IRS. Have you ever been contacted by the IRS? I've been contacted by the IRS scam over and over again, and I can never like you don't know how many times I've gotten the phone call and they've told me like they're from the IRS and they're and I'm like oh my god like it's one of the scams like I'm trying to get the my equipment together so I can <laughs> record it to be like okay now what's going on you know and have you ever had that where the scam this was a big one. The scam is they call and they tell you, and this cracks me up because I almost want to correct them and be like, listen, bro, that's not how it works. What are you doing? <laughs> Work on your game, bro. Yeah, yeah, Work yeah. on this. Okay. Perfect your craft for Christ's sake. Who's doing this? Who's reading the script? Who's writing the script, <laughs> this script for you? Um, like let, let's work on this. Let's tailor it to, so that it's actually believable. Um, but the, the, the scam is that they call you and they, so there's, there's obviously different versions. So anybody in the comment section is going to be like, that's not the scam. There's different versions. Okay. But one of the ones that was very popular probably about two years ago was they would call you up and they would tell you that they were from the IRS or law enforcement. I mean, usually like like IRS. Like they said they were like an IRS agent. They right. made it sound like they were. And there are IRS agents that are investigators that are almost like the FBI. Right. They have guns, the whole thing. But they were from the IRS, and they were saying, look, a vehicle was found um, in Texas that is connected to your social security number. And it was like, okay. <laughs> and they go, so, um, you know, for, and it would always be like, what is your name? And of course, you just readily give them your name. They're like, right. yep, okay, so Mr. Cox. Uh, it's connected to your social security number and um, and the, the vehicle was found abandoned. There was there was a weapon in the vehicle as as well as like two kilos of like, you know, drugs, right? You know, Coke or something. This is the IRS calling you? It, it, that's what I'm saying. Like, it doesn't make sense. And then they would say, um, uh, you know, we, how did it go where they basically said that we're going to, that we need you to pay the fine to return the vehicle back to the rental company and pay the fine for like the, 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 the deposit for like the, the insurance deductible or something it was ridiculous. It's like $2,200 or whatever. And, and they're like, if you don't do this within the next, you know, 48 hours, then your, 
it was um they were going to cancel your social security number. I remember that. Like none of this. Like Even there's no canceling my social my social security number. There's just nothing you're saying makes sense. Like, and I've been told when I've talked to people about this scam, they're like, it's funny because, you know, sometimes you get the emails, right? You read the email. It used to be big on the emails, and I used to get the emails all the time uh, before I went to prison because that you know that scam has like I said it's evolved, right? And I would read the emails, and the emails would have like misspelled words and, and, and poor <laughs> poor structure, poor sentence structure. And you're like, yes. this is supposed to be Syntax. from a lawyer, yeah. and it doesn't even make sense. And I was told that the reason that they do that on purpose, and I went, why? They were like, they oh. do it on purpose because if you're dumb enough to not catch those things, then you're dumb enough to fall for the scam. Hmm. Now – I, I disagree. If that's their their mentality, I disagree because you don't have to be stupid to fall for a scam. Lots of smart people fall for scams. Probably not those scams. Oh, um, my girl laughs at me all the time. I fell for um, the Am- – I got a text from Amazon saying my account's been canceled. I need to verify your account. That's when I was – remember I was here and people were hitting me cash app on my card? Remember I said, hey, somebody's cash cash apping money off my card. Oh, yeah. What happened? One, one day I got a text message telling me my Amazon account was canceled. And I'm like, what? They go, we need you to verify your information. So I click on the link in the text and I start filling out. They go, give me your card. I give them my card number. Then I give them my address. Then they wanted my social and date of birth. Then I start saying, <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah, I'm saying to myself, I'm like, I never even gave Amazon my social. Yeah, but, what, what, my, but then my mind goes, no, 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 no. They're verifying that that is your card. So I put in my social and my date of birth. And then like two days later, someone's snatching money off of my um, cash app. Did you get the money back from cash yeah, app? Yeah, um, they, they had canceled it. They hadn't transferred it. When they did the transfer, they put it on hold. They did like, uh, remember it was like 300. They did like 250. They started off with 50, then 100. Then two hundred. You know that Jess got hit with a uh, um, OnlyFans the other day. They charged her for like twenty bucks, and then they charged her like ten bucks, and then fifteen, and then like another ten, and then she realized what was happening, and she like called and said, "Hey, what's going on?" and and shut the card off. It had a new card issued. Right. But her whole thing was she was like, "Like, how would OnlyFans even get my number?" Like I've never been on. Like she was like, I've never been on OnlyFans. Right. Like I don't have a page. I've well, never somebody, been on somebody it. Somebody has her. So they, you know, they sell our our, our card information, and right. and like the, the FBI has been the FBI let those sites operate almost with impunity for right. a long time, and I guess they waited and then they they went in and they shut down like ninety five percent of them, you know. But before it was it was just wide open. They were competing for price. But I know that they're getting them by sin because I get the text message now. I don't even fall for it. First time I fell for it. And, you know, my girl laughs because she's like, you're a scammer. How the hell you pay for a scam? I said, I had just placed. I run the scam. I had just placed an Amazon order. And I'm like, oh, no, I don't want my stuff canceled. (laughs) They just the, The timing was perfect. And what's so funny is after I put all that information in, they just sent me to the Amazon site, right, where I looked and and my um, account wasn't locked. So it made it look like, oh, yeah, we unlocked it. <laughs> Boy, thank you. They're taking care of me. <laughs> I got to run to the bathroom real quick. All right. We just looked up another video on the LaSalle, the LaSalle University student. And uh, um, Zach was right. What was it? Eight, so I was saying like 18 months or something. No, she, she did it. Obviously, it was eight transactions. So what I guess she, they said it was a low end jewelry store. Yeah. Items were typically 50 bucks. Right. And so I guess she overpriced a couple of customers. And yeah, then I get that's insane. Well, insane. I, yeah, I don't I don't like how, how do you like I still don't understand. How do you run up? Like if you said, hey, I'm going to hit this guy's credit card up for one hundred thousand dollars. No, you're not. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. Well, right. Wells Fargo is not giving you a hundred thousand of my. Of- well, they said she did eight transactions totaling five hundred and forty thousand dollars, and and the reason. Um, or did ret- they say she got greedy and she tried to do a million dollars at the end? 
that's where the million dollars oh. came from. Like the last day before she left, she tried to do a million dollar um, return onto her card, and and one of the other um, crew members got suspicious and called the cops. Okay. All right. I don't. I don't understand. Like, <laughs> like the sloppiness. You, well, yeah. You, <laughs> like, I'm gonna steal like five hundred thousand dollars from this company, and nobody's gonna say anything. <laughs> yeah, I don't. That's what I'm saying. I don't understand. Like, that's why. Like the one scam I had, where I made the the synthetic identities, and I borrowed against the properties. Like that scam was, you know, had the people I was dealing with not got caught on another scam, that scam was like pull, foolproof. You know, I'm buying something for 50000 I'm getting the value run up to 200000 I'm borrowing 180000 so I pay back the fifty. so I just made one thirty, And then I make a few payments, and I let it go into foreclosure. The bank takes the property back. They stick it back. They were sticking them back on the market for two hundred. It's like, are you serious? Like they believed it. Now they could never sell them for that. They ended up selling them for like 70,000, still more than the 50 that I had bought. But by that time, the whole area was going up, but they never thought fraud because every, all of the ways that they went out of their way to check, like, how do we know what this house is really worth? Do an appraisal. And the appraisal is the based appraisal, on comparables. Yeah, the appraisal comes back and says that's what it's worth. Well, why can't we sell it? Well, it's in bad shape. Oh, my gosh, how bad a shape. Well, you know, well, the bank doesn't want to fix it up. Right. They don't want to dump money into it. That's not their business. And people don't realize that, too. Like, you, the banks don't do repairs because now they're they're stuck up for the repairs. You know, oh, we fixed the roof. Well, you have a two, two years later or two months later, it starts to rain or, or it leaks. They go back to the bank and say, fix the roof. You said it, <laughs> You said it had a brand new roof. Right. You know, anything that goes wrong, they just go back, keep going back to the bank. And who's going to side with the bank? If the bank, they go to court, no jury is going to side with Bank of America. No. They're just not. They're going to be like, no, you sold the house. You said you renovated the house and the, the, the wire's bad. Right. Or the, uh, the plumbing's bad or the whatever's bad. And you're a bank. You're a rich bank. You should have fixed it. They're like, they would rather just take the loss and, and to eliminate the liability. Right. But, you know, the point is, is that like that was a great scam because even when people came looking, they just said, yeah, it just we lost the money. It just happens sometimes because sometimes like sometimes you go in the bank, you have perfect credit. You go in the bank, you borrow 200 or twenty thousand dollars, you know, right. as a personal loan and you do it to do something. Go go on vacation to pay back your parents who lent you money for a new boat or whatever the reason is you to consolidate your credit cards. The point is, is you take $20,000 out, you make four payments, you lose your job or suddenly <laughs> your wife leaves you. Right. Or you're in a car accident and you can't pay. Right. And it goes into foreclosure. Right. That's not fraud. No. That's something well, bad happened. Th- th- right. But that that's the appearance you were giving that yes. it was, wasn't fraud. But Right. <laughs> But I, I'm saying that was like, that's why they don't, they weren't, they didn't think they were, you know, scammed. But in this case, like, you're not going to take half a million dollars from a small business. And well, not- right. You're right. Because the, the customers weren't affected, even though they were. I, I, it, I don't it, know. It doesn't make sense. That's what I'm saying. When they, what they just said doesn't make sense. Yeah. And, unless somehow there's a return, there's a separate. So uh, on a, when you're working a credit card machine. You've got your purchases and you've got your returns. So I, I would imagine either the machine held the amount of the returns in one area and, and at the end of the day, she would process out all the payments. And I guess at some point she built up the returns to like eighty or $100,000 and just, and then like, she doesn't have a card worth $100,000. No. no. So I'm sure she doesn't have a credit card with an $80,000 balance that she's paying off. So if she put eighty thousand dollars on her ten thousand dollar credit card, so she's got ten thousand. I, I don't, I don't, I don't fully understand. I don't either. You know, did, did I tell you this? Um, there was a guy who was telling me a story. You know, I get guys all the time who are like, "Bro, you got to hear this," and I'm like, you know, sometimes, like, I honestly, if out of all, out of five, let's say I get five a week, right? I might actually. The might guy might write up an email or something, and I might think this is a potential story, so I'm interested, and so I'll, I'll 
say, hey, text me or I'll text in my phone number or whatever. We'll end up on a call and we'll talk. You know, sometimes it's just like, sometimes they're just, I just want to, wanted to tell you this story. Like they don't, they're not interested. It's something that happened to a friend. This was actually pretty good. This guy said um, he knew somebody who was making counterfeit um, American Express black cards. And what would happen is he said, if you were had an American Express card, he would put your real numbers on the black card. Now, the black card doesn't work. Like, it's not like you can go in and buy a car like a real one or a house. You can't do that. Right. But he said, like, you could literally pull the card out and get into special, like, in a, in, um, in a lot of nice airports. American Express has certain rooms. They have, like, right. where you can go, and it's a, it's a yes. nice restaurant. It's a nice area. What do they call it? A club, uh, club room or something at the airports? You Black. ever been in one of those? No. No. Oh, my God. Nice. What? So in in my day, wow. All right. Um, remember, I told you how I used to I used to fly back and forth from Texas to Georgia when I moved to Atlanta. Right. Um, I I got a gold membership on. I just flew Delta because Delta is right out of Atlanta. I got a gold membership that allowed me to upgrade to first class, which allowed me to meet Tony Robbins. But um, with that membership came the club. The the gold member I forgot I thought got the name I'm saying it's it like wrong. The, isn't it the the air f- or the flight club or the yes. air f- it's got some so I'm like Sky they, Miles Club yes, or they, something they gave me oh this gives you access to the sky I became a platinum I was a right. gold member and I, I became a platinum member and so this gives me the sky so so I go into the club one day and like there's someone there giving you free drinks there's a spread. Uh, cut cutlery. What is it? Cut, cut, cutlery. Cutlery. What? No, the board with the meats and the cheese. Cutlery board or something like I, that. I don't know. I'm not that big. I'm not that uh, frou frou. Oh, frou frou. <laughs> right. No, they they'd have like different meats, smoked salmon, cheese. Right. Like food there to eat. Look and, and like breakfast. Like if you flew in the morning, they'd have a breakfast out there. I'm like, this is, I'm going, I'm in there. I'm like, this is unbelievable. All right. So this is, so it's a nice, it's nice. You get to hang out. It's yes. got like a, a oh, an office a rich, area. And listen, this is my 25, 26 year old black ass hanging out with all these 55, 60 year old rich white men, you know, <laughs> you know, just having a great time telling all kind of stories that had racial undertones, but it was kind of <laughs> always with that. So listen, yeah. so. Anyway, that card, he said the cards were so good you could get into the cl- those clubs. You could walk in and you show your card and they would like, you, come on, because it came with those, right. whatever, the Sky Miles yes. Club or whatever it's called. Yes, Delta so, Delta and American Express, yes. So he said he would get in there. He said, not just that. He said you could use the card. Like if you went to buy something, you could buy it. He said, now it went on your regular card. They don't know that. Right. But he said, and people would pay him. Like he'd sell them for like a thousand or, or so dollars just to make the card, even though he's like, it's not really a counterfeit card. Like it's a counterfeit card, but you're not using it. It's a counterfeit card. It's a counterfeit card, but you're not using it to counterfeit to, to scam anybody. You're not. It's not like a fake credit card. No, it's attached to my real card. And he said, so this guy, he was, this guy did this for years. And, and he's like, you know, think about it. He goes, it's a status signal. Like, like, you know, you pull out a card to go pay for drinks with some chick at a club. And they're like, whoa, he's got a black card. Like, you know, that's like no limits. You could put a couple, two, three hundred thousand, a million dollars on that card. They probably get a call. But, you know, like that's that's impressive. Right. Like and so people would pay him and he he made a ton of money doing that. Now, I don't know. That was one of these emails that I got where the guy was going, we were going back and forth and the guy was like, yeah, bro, I listen to this. And he just told me this. I think he just told me the story and wasn't interested in coming on because it like wasn't him. Right. I forget who it was. I get so many of these. I feel bad because people email me and sometimes I don't respond to them, but I get so many. And then sometimes it's like, does that require a response? Like, did he expect a response? <laughs> he just told me a story. Like he didn't like, right. are you trying to come on the program and tell that story like i don't understand you work at target you're telling me a story about a guy you once knew that had I appreciate counterfeit it. black cards yeah you know it's Which amazing is- how how far the credit cards or charge cards have come because american express 
used to be the elite card, mm-hmm. you know, and it was unlimited. And then they started limiting it because they wanted to get more members. And they start with that. Didn't they, they switched to like the, I had a, a blue card or something like that. Or I had yeah, a American express blue card. Yeah. It was that actually was, a credit I, card. Yes. It was, it was a regular credit card with monthly. So American express at, at some point, I guess the elite and millionaires, they're like, okay, y'all aren't spending enough. And MasterCard and Visa are beating our ass. You know, um, just I, I don't remember where I studied credit cards, but I remember reading it as I was frauding, but it wasn't in school. It was just one of those things that I studied. I'm sure. <laughs> but so when when credit, first of all, when credit cards came out, there was just a book that would come out once a week of stolen cards. And they would match up the numbers like it would go from the last number forward. Right. You know, if it was a seven, it'd go to the pages with the seven and the six and it go to six. And see if it was listed in the stolen card book. Right. Otherwise, they would so they would take the charge and, and <laughs> mail it in and get their check back. And, you know, that that's yeah. how it started off. Then they had the authorization. They had a machine that would call up and get authorization because then because after the manual, then they could use a phone to dial it up and all that stuff. But through all of that, American Express is a as a charge card stayed, and the American Express card was always unlimited. It's when they started trying, when they got s- superseded or passed by Visa and MasterCard, that they said, "Hey, we want that part of that market." And they started doing credit cards, but they're the first ones to come up with the black card, right? Because they they had they're the first ones to do the gold and platinum cards. They're the first ones to do the black card. You know, Capital One has a black card. Now everyone everyone follows behind American Express and what they're doing. So I guess the, the, the elite, the black card was by itself for 10 years. And now it's a couple of them. I was going to say, I, I like when I first got an American Express card, I would, um, like they, they would tell you, oh, there's no limit. It was like, you know, like stop. It's, you're not going to let me go spend fifty, sixty thousand dollars on a on a card. Cause yeah, I, yeah. I but they wouldn't. I had the regular card. Because what happened the was green one? Yeah, just a regular green one. And what would happen is you'd go and you'd I'd run it up to three grand or four grand. And at some point they would call. This was back when they would call. Like that doesn't happen anymore. You know, they would call and they would say, Can you put him on the phone? And you I'd say, Yeah, what's up? They go, Hey, you know, listen, what's going on? You're you're up, you know, like like it it, it was not that, you know, you're up to Three thousand dollars. You know, it's not that we're limiting you, but I'm just wondering. You know, well, you did have you a pay it off at the end of the month? I did pay it off at the end of the month. But what happened is when you're jumping from a couple of months at a thousand or twelve hundred, then suddenly you jump to seventy five hundred. Oh yeah, something like that. Then they they call you and they just want to make sure they call the merchant at the store, right? Just to make sure everything's okay. And they, yeah, yeah, no, I know, I know, I spent. And they go, well, well, can you tell me what your last transaction was? Yeah. See, people now don't realize like they don't get those calls. No, like now you don't get a call. You don't. You go. It's either declined or it's accepted, and they don't realize like it used to be. They would sometimes they would get a call or they'd tell them to call. They'd call, and they'd say yes, and they go, "Can I see your ID?" And they'd give your ID and they'd read it to the person and yeah, no, it's him, it's him. Okay, thank you. Hang up the phone and like now people are like, "That's insane." Who does, know, that, does that? But think about this, Matt. That was just the nineties. Yeah. Well, of course, the nineties was what thirty years ago. <laughs> Listen, we got to the point when I when I had a, a business American Express where we were spending thirty forty thousand dollars a month on it. I remember, we got free. I was told uh, justice the other day. I remember we hired a manager to run the broke to run Consortium Financial Services. So we hired a manager, and he came on board. He got like a bonus of like ten grand. He was there, and he said, "Look, I still have loans to close out at the other place I was at." So he said, I'm going to be working on those loans, but I'm managing, I'll, but I'll don't, it won't interfere, but I have to close out. I got like eight loans to close out. We're like, okay, that's fine. So he was closing those loans out for like over the course of a month or two. So you're still working for the other company and you're managing my guys kind of like he is. And then by about the third month, we got American Express. We were spending so much money. They gave us two tickets to the Super Bowl. When the Super Bowl was in in um, Tampa, in Tampa, we gave them to him. So he got free Super Bowl tickets. He brought his daughter to Super Bowl, and a week later he quit. quit. And <laughs> he was like, You're a scumbag. 
Like, and we were paying them a salary. We're, like, we're paying you a salary. We're paying you to close loans for, for another company. You're not really doing your job. We gave you Super Bowl tickets and you quit. So uh, can I ask why? Like Stupid you got gorgeous. the Super Bowl tickets and you're like, I don't want to go. I'm not. I, I wasn't interested. Like, I, I honestly. Understood. And, and Dave. So you offered it to him. Do you remember the call? Did you offer it to him or something? No, no. Else um, Dave Walker was my business. This by this point, I was I was actually on probation for the first time I got caught. Right. I was running a scam, and Dave was running consortium. He'd hired a ton of people. Dave really didn't know much uh, about loans, and I can only kind of help so much. I'm doing this other thing. I'm also doing a development company with another guy, so. You know, I can't come there. So he hired a manager and he's paying the guy, you know, we're paying him like, I don't know what it was. It wasn't, it was like four or 5,000 a month. Right. But he's doing that. Plus he's getting a percentage of all the loans that are closing. So I don't know how much that was. Is that a few thousand? I don't know. But he's also closing loans at the other biz place he used to work at. And so had he, had he been getting his salary and getting a portion of what everybody was closing, he could have been making 15 or $20,000 a month. Now we didn't get to that point because after he basically got the $10,000, got a couple of checks for 5,000, got another seven or $8,000 from his old business, his old place he was working, um, got, got his uh, tickets, took his daughter to Super Bowl and quit. So we never got to the point where, because the place we, part of his job was you got to, you got to, you got to train these guys. You have to, um, get them motivated. Like we just hired a bunch of guys. So the, the point is, is that I didn't go Dave for some reason didn't go. And you would think if you'd seen Dave, you would have thought he, he would have been, been a, sports, a sports guy, but he really wasn't, you know? Um, and so he didn't want to go. And so it was like, Hey, let's, as a, let's give it to this guy. Like this guy, we're really banking on Mikey. this guy. Let's <laughs> make him happy. Let's, and you know, he was just, it's funny too, because I was wondering his reaction, like, oh. Well, when he quit, he took a couple of guys with him to another company. I think they might have even started their own company. Well, here's the thing. Like, a lot of these guys were in AA. And I, what? Alcohol. Anonymous, right. Um, And they were all sober. You know, they'd been sober. That's how they kind of knew each other, right? So what was funny is my, was Dave, I remember like a month or so later, Dave said he had seen one of the guys at a meeting. And the guy just walked up behind him and patted him on the back. And Dave looked at him and he, he goes, you can't shove the knife in any further. <laughs> and he was like, oh, don't be like that. He goes, and he just walked off. <laughs> now, but I was, and I remember Dave was smart. Like I was like, God, that's, that was fast. Like Dave was fast. I had an Audi TT. Dave was six foot six. Wow. And I, and fat, like a big old belly. I remember I had an Audi TT Quattro. He tried to get, he did get in it, but I mean, you wanted to, it was like, it was like a, <laughs> it was like a big old clown in one of those little tiny, um, uh, Volkswagens. Like not the, like the ones where the, the midget cars, where they shrink them down and the right. midgets drive around them. Like he just like his legs are practically sticking out. Like, I mean, he's, he could barely, he's like this and his legs are up and he's, oh, he's to, driving it. He's trying to drive my, I was like, bro, this is not going to work. David, oh, I can get in here. I can get in. I'm like, what are you doing, Dave? <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, I just thought it was. Did I? I, I didn't I tell you about the time we were walking down the stairs? I mean, Dave, Dave and I I'm were. Sure walking. I did that multiple times. No, listen, <laughs> one time we were moving, and this was I had to. I know. I, I think I maybe I told Jess this because I remember laughing about it, and Jess was just looked at me like, "What am I doing? What a mistake I've made being with you." <laughs> um, I had we had a half a million dollar life insurance policy on each of us. Beneficiary, each of you. Each of us. Right. If you died of an accident, it was double indemnity. Whew. Right. So Dave, like I said, Dave had uh, spinal pifida. You know what that is? It's like a deterioration of your spine. So he had like you couldn't tell, but he was he was in bad shape. And even it's funny, too. This is before oxycodone and stuff, right? Like before pill mills, like he was on oxys. But I knew he was on painkillers, but for his back. But right. I didn't think any, like, I didn't realize what, how bad of a, of a problem it was. Right. Um, so I don't know, didn't know anything about drugs at the time. So, but I do remember he would take them and he would, he would say stuff to me. Um, and he'd say, well, I'm, you know, God, I'm a little dro- groggy right now. Cause I just took a, a, 
a, a pain pill. I'd be like, oh, okay. And I don't even, you know, I, I was like, oh, do do do. <laughs> so anyway, I remember we were walking. He had a box in his hand, big old box. And I had a big old box in my hand. And we were walking down the staircases. Now the building we were in was built back in probably the late, seven, late 60s or early 70s. So code now is you have, let's say, 10 stairs and a platform. Right. Ten, and then you have a platform, which then it turns 10 stairs. Anybody who's been to a, has been, walked upstairs, you know you always have the platforms. This was a rear staircase in the back of the building. I'm telling you, man, that thing went 30 feet straight. Concrete, really wide. Like you couldn't grab one rail or the other at the same time. Wow. Right. Now, maybe Dave could. He was, I would never be able to do it. But, and Dave's walking, and I'm walking down with a box. Like we had just turned, and he's walking, and. Like I said, he was so tall and gangly. And I remember I almost tripped, right? And I was like, oh, my God. And if I had tripped, I would have dropped the box on him. And he would have just tumbled down the stairs. And I remember walking and thinking to myself, oh, my God. If I drop this, like if I lean through it on and pushed him, he's already holding this thing. He's going to draw. He's going to go down 30 feet worth of stairs, concrete <laughs> stairs. Man, that'll kill him. This dude, like, this is, this is, and I thought, man, I got a huge insurance policy on this guy. <laughs> and let's face it, if it doesn't kill him, like, if it doesn't kill him, like, I'm, I tripped. I'm so sorry, Dave. I tripped. Like, what's he going to say? Like, I almost, I, like, I did almost trip just now. Oh, he could be pissed, but I mean. He but could... even, even pissed, like, I tripped. I'm sorry, you could have tripped. Like, uh, and I, I mean, listen, when we got down to the very end, and we walked over and put the put the the boxes in the back of the truck. I remember, I, he, I I had bought this truck. It wasn't even in my name. It was in like a fake person's name. I bought a, a like an F two fifty crew cab four x four. It was a giant of a truck, wow. and, it, and he drove it. Um, we put the boxes back and we set them down there, and he like looked at me. He said, "What's up?" And I went, "Oh God, David, you don't know how close you came to dying." <laughs> and he, he goes, what? I said, listen, I, I kind of almost tripped, right? Like went from behind, when I was behind you, he goes, oh, Jesus. I said, yeah. And I would have dropped that box on you. He goes, oh, man. I said, yeah. And I, then I started thinking, but I didn't. I said, and then I started thinking, if I just drop this box on this dude, he's going down those stairs. And he immediately looked up at the stairs and thought, and he, and he goes, that would have killed me. And I said, I know. And the policy flashed in my head. And there was a couple of seconds there. I said, I, I'm, I'm sorry. He goes, Jesus. He looked at me. <laughs> he was like, you are a devious little fucker. <laughs> and Dave was, I'm 5'6". Dave's a foot taller. I'm like, yeah, Dave. It was horrible. I, so I, I was really concerned with him. I was like, you don't know how it came. It was, it was a, there was a real argument. In, in, right. There was a it's, battle. I mean, the good the angel and devil were going it's, at it. It wasn't it, the, the battle wasn't over until about the halfway point where it, I got to that finally got to that point and I thought he'll survive. <laughs> and listen, I, I went so far as like glancing around thinking, are there cameras back here? There's no cameras. <laughs> I would have absolutely got away with it. There was no cameras. And what does it matter if I, there were cameras? It just show me tripping. Like if I fall and hit him with the box and grab the rail, like I'm gonna be okay. I'm in good shape. He's dead. <laughs> this guy's 150 pounds overweight. He's massively overweight. He's addicted to these pills. <laughs> so he looked like, oh my god, that would have killed. Oh, me. he was like that would. And I was like, whoo, whoo. I was like, you don't know the battle. You don't know <laughs> like the internal struggle that happened over those few, few seconds. And I was like. Thank and he goodness. was like, yeah, he was just like, well, thank God you made the right call. Did I? Did I make the right call? Well, do you think that now? He died eventually. I mean, he was 20 years later, but he did die of natural yeah, causes. Exactly. So would that have been like, you know, he did die. He was going to die eventually. Amen. <laughs> of something. Yeah. Yeah. He why, he. why not? Why not you get paid? What happened to that policy? Oh, I'm sure it expired or whatever. You know, it's that's, uh, it's uh, yeah, it's too bad. I'd, I'd call him. Maybe you can claim it. Right. Anyway, <laughs> I could um, call him up now and be like, "He died." <laughs> like, yeah, listen, you. It's yeah. 20 years later. Yeah, you had your chance. You, yeah. <laughs> I, I just watched your podcast. I yeah, saw the thing yeah, about the box. Had, yeah, you, we would have never questioned that. I mean, you you had your chance. You blew it. Oh, All listen, right. he was br he was brittle too. Brittle. Brittle. 
He really? Was, he was just, Doc, Mr. Glass? Yeah, he he really. Because at one point, he something happened, and he had like a, a appendicitis or something and had to go into the hospital. And he was in there, and he actually went into a coma. Because when he went in, he explained to them, listen, I'm, I'm on this much oxycodone. <laughs> And you cannot now. They wanted to take them off of it because apparently you don't heal as well if you're on opiates. The, it slows your anyway right, stream right. of your blood going down. Right. And so what he said was, so they were like, "Well, you're going to have to get off that." And then he goes, "Listen, I'm telling you, don't just take me off of it. If you just take me off of it, he's like, I don't know what will happen. Like I'm taking a ton of this stuff. Like he was at, this was back before they had maximums." There was no doctor shopping yet. This is back in like 2000. And- you get 90 pills from, you know who I, you remember Doc at Coleman? Yeah. I read his paperwork. Good old Doc. Yeah. The, the girl oh. uh, with it on her tongue. Right. When she. Yes. They found her. De- I think, I think they over, I think they overhyped that. They actually had a pill on her tongue. Yeah. Like, like, come on. You know, one of the cops put that in her mouth, but go ahead. They struck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we read that together. Uh, yeah, it was horrible. Horrible. Yeah. He he come in and hey, I'll give you 90 oxys. <laughs> <laughs> and like, jeez. Doc. Yeah. Did you Um God, do you remember the time? I I know I've told this story, but what? Did you have you told this story? The story about Doc waking him up, where he would have oh, the night scream. Night yes, terror? I was a Sally. Right, but I mean, did you ever tell that story on the podcast? No. You where he had so Doc was. Oh yeah, when I'm six <laughs> six foot. Doc is a skinny, probably in his early seventies. Early. He, oh, was it late seventies? <laughs> you know, he died. He died. I'm. Well, you're not shocked. He was. His hands were turning blue all the time. Remember? Yeah. He oh, just warm that up. Yeah, his hands would turn blue because he had some condition with his heart. So he's in the late seventies, tall and skinny. He had a so hawk he, of a nose, didn't oh, he? Oh yes, that he had a beaker was... from out of this world. And he was on the. I don't um, remember his name. Though. Jeb Bush. He was on the Jeb Bush. Yes. Case. He he prescribed his the, um knee, one of his daughters, or I think he he supplied one of the people who supplied Jeb Bush's. Daughter. Right, right. He had written the scripts that ended up in just Jeb. Bush's daughter's hands. Jenna or whatever. Right. No, I so, think Jenna's George's Bush's daughter. But anyway, go well, ahead. So, so he used to, Doc used to have night terrors. Yes. And was screaming one night. When I. And you, you, tell, you had to gonna, wake, you had to wake him up. Yes. Right? Yes. I had to wake him up. He's screaming. Oh, no. Oh, help. This is help. in a two man so, cell. I'm in three man. Really? Oh. But, it, but it was two of us in there. Okay. So yeah, I'm in the room with Doc with an old man that had night terrors often. And people go, those those dead bodies coming to haunt you. So he's an old white man. I'm a big black guy. Right. And so in the middle of the night, he's screaming, Oh, help! Help! Oh, help. So I get off my bunk and I'd have to wake him up. So the way the bunks were structured, it was three bunks. The tallest bunk is right here. So you can't sit up on any bunk. Yeah. And the bottom bunk is so low that you really can't sit down. If you're sitting down on it, your your knees are like right here. Yeah, you'd have to lean way forward. It would hit the hit your back. Yes. And and so when he's on this bottom bunk, I actually have to go down low and reach in and grab him out of the bunk. So he's screaming and I'm reaching in to help him wake him up like doc get up but i'm reaching in and i'm saying to myself as i'm waking him up i'm saying to myself if a guard looked in the door if a ceo (laughs) came in right now and and saw me reaching in grabbing this guy and he's screaming for help they're like get your hands off that fragile man (laughs) well what (laughs) didn't you say one time you you would wake him up and he'd roll over like what yeah like Like what's going on yeah like what's going on what what do you want why are you waking me up it's insane. Like he used to have the ones about his his wife trying to put him in a fire or something. Yes, he told me those are the nightmares he told me about. That she was like, she I can't really set, remember that. Oh, Doc Doc was the biggest heart in the world 
but just like angry, I guess, angry old white guy. Of course he's But he had the huge, like he'd buy you, if you needed something, he'd ask, what do you want from commissary? You could have anything that belonged to him. And super smart. Like you could walk in and just ask him. He was like, he was like, you could walk in and say, Jeopardy. Yeah. Hey doc, what's up with such and such? Oh, well, you know, that happened in night. That was uh, the gold standard. Let's see. That was 1970 such a day. Now here's the issue with that. And he would just, you could just listen to him for an hour. He just tell you everything. He got caught up in the pill mill. Yep. And he it's funny too cuz this is a guy who got he used to say he had a life sentence, but really what did he have? 30. 30 years, which was a life sentence for him. Is. Yeah, he was 75, right. 78. But it, it wasn't it, listen, even he paid he paid like over a quarter of a million for his legal team. Who was that? Conrad Black? Was it? Conrad Black paid 200 million. Oh. Doc paid like 250,000. I'm sorry. Conrad I, Black, Black paid. Conrad Black had. I was thinking Roy Black. I'm sorry. The oh, lawyer Roy. lawyer is oh, yeah. in, in, in Miami. Roy is Roy Black. Yes. Sorry. Conrad Black was at the low. He yeah, paid 200. Conrad Black had five law offices on complete retainer. $200 million worth of law, right? And his whole thing was, I can't. I still can't get justice with $200 million. Like that. that's like. You fart, and they're like, you want us to sue him? No, no, I'm just, it's gas. I'm okay. <laughs> um, he, I, I, I was going to say, um, Jeb, I mean, the uh, doc, doc thing. I gotta, he, I'm going to remember his he name. Was, he was there for, it, it wasn't even for, like, distribution of the drugs. He, he got the time was actually for, like, Medicare or something like that, wasn't it? Yes. That's dang. what was so weird. That's right. Like they hammered him for like couldn't because really, the drug was legal. Right. They couldn't really get him for for prescribing the the for. for but like, they did. I mean, they did, but that's not what he got the time for. It was the Medicare they, fraud? They, they blasted him on the Medicare fraud. Like they ballooned up the numbers. They said, okay, well, we can't get him on this, but we can get you on Medicare fraud. And you know how they get him on the Medicare fraud? Do you no. know? You know? Because he thought what he was doing was legal. Right. That's a big problem. I don't know if you've ever seen the stuff on the pill mill guys, but the pill mill guys, the U.S. attorneys are like, what's interesting about arresting these guys is that usually if you arrest a drug dealer, as soon as you get in there, like he knows he's a drug dealer. So if you're negotiating with him, you're negotiating with someone, at least we both know you're a drug dealer. I'm the U.S. attorney. You have to go to jail. What you did, you know what you did was wrong. Right. He said, but with the doctors, the problem is when they, if they plead guilty or whatever, you spend half the time just explaining to them what they did was illegal. He's like, because they don't want to admit that what I did was illegal. And look, in my opinion, I'd say 90% of those doctors that are in there, like, it's not illegal. Like, they, they would get some of these guys. Well, it, it must it must have been a gray area. It is I, a gray never, area, but for them, that you know. The, I never understood it. Well, so. well. I was, was going like, to say about so the, Medicare was covering that, wasn't it? Right, but here's the problem with the Medicare. Well, no, it wasn't even that. Like that, like those the drugs had nothing to do with Medicare. They just went in and said. So I knew a guy that did that. That this happened to. Oh, I remember, where they, I remember reading. It. Go ahead. They went in, and when you go to Medicare, you have like four different levels you can bill at, and you would bill. You would say, okay, so there's a there's the number one is where you walk in. They just talk to you. Right. And you prescribe them something or you don't prescribe them something. And there's never an examination. Right. That's you bill them, let's say, $90 for the visit. But then you have the second tier where it's a cursory and whatever. And then it's it's second level. And you get 100 and something for that. And then you, for a little bit more, it's when you do an examination. And then there's a top tier where you do an examination and you take blood or you do whatever. Right. Well, a a lot of doctors would come in and they talk to the person and then they bill at the third level. Like, and they'd write it up. Like I gave him an examination, this and this, but the truth is based on what hap- what he said, you didn't need to give him an examination. Right. You're checking the box so you can charge at the third level. Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you what's cause I, re- I specifically remember this for docs paperwork is he would, they would give him their Medicare number and he would bill it. He wouldn't verify. So you might be able to go in there with your aunt's, Medicare number, right, and just give me the number. He wouldn't verify it. Okay, I remember one of the people that the guy that said that he just touched his neck a couple of times and gave him a prescription for ninety six pills, and he billed like Medicare like a few thousand dollars. My neck hurts. Oh yeah, 
Yeah. <laughs> no, no. We need, you need the max. Yeah. <laughs> would you 96 like, pills. Would you like some Xanax with that? Of course. I like to throw in some Xanax to kind of, you know, smooth take, out. Take, take the, the edge on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Poor doc, man. Yeah. Died in, died in, uh, he died. Um, I left in 12. He died in, I looked him up once. That's why I'm dying. I can't. Once I, when I got out the first time, I looked him up. I had a bunch of those names written down and I started looking people. I had a ton of them. Like people, whenever I left any institution, I had all the people who I knew, I'd write their name down and then I'd look them up when I got out. And Doc was one of them and he died. He died in, in like 15, 2015. I have, yeah, I have people like that. I look up every once in a while. Like I look up Red Bull. There's a guy <laughs> named Red Bull. Um, Andrew Levinson. So I look him up every once in a while to see where he is. Is he out? No, he's still in prison. He's another one that went to trial. Like they probably offered him like two or three years. And I'm not doing that. And he went to trial and got like 15 or 16 years. It was like, Jesus. Somebody was just telling me the other day about somebody that ran from the police, took him on chases and got offered seven years. And like, hell no, I'm not taking that crap. He was dealing drugs. And then they ended up giving him life. And he's been in, this is state. He's been in jail for 12 years. Fighting it? Fighting to get the life off when they offered him to seven. You know, like, that's the weirdest part is when whatever conviction you have at the arrest, like, I'm going to trial, mm -hmm. motherfuckers. No matter what. Here, here, well, here's a deal of seven years. Listen, F you, I'm going to trial. Right. Right? And then you lose you get life, and then in the eighth year, like the regret has to oh, be God. like just sitting, sitting there, like, "Hey, what? like I'm regret, like, hey, man, how you doing? Yeah. <laughs> Look at her, like Shit. you son of a you'd bitch. probably be in the halfway house right now. <laughs> God, you'd be home. You know, like I just, I'm just here to remind you, you would be home right now. I mean, I, I'm just. <laughs> I used to love the guys. I used to love the guys that would say. I say, why'd you go to trial, bro? And they go, they go, well, you know, I, I, I reserve my rights, though. <laughs> you, you still got ten years. They offered you probation. You got ten years. That's the low talking. Yeah, <laughs> people, that is the low talking. Because the people I talk to, it's like, okay, you're never getting out. <laughs> what did they initially offer you? They initially offered me five years. That was twenty years ago. Oh my oh. god. <laughs> Oh, they gave me 10. Oh. <laughs> Whatever happened to John Gordon? We need to find out. Like, oh, man. I, 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 John Gordon. I've reached out. Like, we found him. Remember, we found him on yes. Facebook or something and we sent him. And he didn't respond? No. What a jerk. Well, I don't, you, you know, John Gordon gave me the spiel that one day he wanted to leave. He told me that when he got out, he didn't want to talk to anybody from prison. That's he said, he said, no offense. But when I get out of here, I don't want to talk to anybody. But I'm sure you can't hold that conviction forever. The funniest guy I've ever come across. I had a perfect story for him earlier. I didn't get a chance to tell it when he was t telling us about one incident. He gave the, oh, yeah, I did, the intended loss. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. like, oh, you intended to get all that money. Yeah. <laughs> um. But um, he gave the best examples at all times. He would write he would write um, motions and say ridiculous stuff. Like he would always throw in something yes. like, you know, you know, that doesn't even, you know, it doesn't make sense. That's the equivalent of I steal an ice cream truck. Yes. So I'm driving the ice cream truck right. and I hit a tree. As it was and, and you, it would just be this outlandish ice cream truck clown, you know, like you know, I run and I hit a clown. Does right. that mean that I'm responsible for the and it'd be like, whoa. Well, there's clowns and ice cream trucks, and what oh are you my doing? God. And he, he was, was he was a metaphor <laughs> king. He was like John Gordon was awesome, awesome, one of the most awesome people to meet there. Yeah, besides us, I guess you know. Yeah, what I'm he was good. Oh man, he. Do you, do you remember when he said he he was talking about his daughter? He was talking to his daughter on the phone one time. And she go Wait. and she, and yeah yes. and and she was like oh my god and she was complaining about something about his her school or whatever he's like well would you like me to teach you you know when, when I get out I can teach you algebra I can teach you I'll I'll be you know you'll be about the age well I'll teach you math I are you listening baby I, I'll teach you math and she goes I, I would you he goes would you like that and she goes I don't know I don't even know you and he said he almost dropped to his knees 
he said, listen, it was like getting hit by a baseball bat in the gut. Did you not hear? Did you hear what Winter said here? No, because I went outside because it was oh, did, getting, did you guys you, were did going. Did you hear that? She said the same thing. She's like, "Oh no, oh, I heard that one." She was like, she was scared when she came in and kind of was. When I came, like, when I came home, she's like, "I don't know this guy." Right? Like you're just a guy. I don't. I know remember who you when are. you told me that. And you, she said, and she said that's when she was really angry. Yeah. Like well, she never, you told me that when you were out, and I was like, "How is that going?" And you were like, "Bro, the other day she told me like I don't really even know know you." Yeah. And you were <laughs> like, "Wow," but I mean, let's you know let. I don't think that you know, probably know anybody that much better. Like to me, growing up with my dad, like I saw him, but we never had any real interactions. Almost never. It was he was almost like this guy that sat in the den, and I had a relationship with my mother. And periodically, every once or twice a once or twice a month, she would say. I don't know. Let's go ask your father. And we would walk in and I would stand there and she would explain the situation and he'd go, he'd look from his book or his paper <sighs> with a cigarette and he'd go, ah, that's fine. That's fine. Is that what you want to do? Yes, sir. Yeah, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. <laughs> right back to the paper. And you're just like, like that was the relationship I had with him. So, you know, so I, but so I, to me, I, I had, I had he not been in the house, I almost feel like I could say, I don't know you. Like I don't know. I didn't know him till I was, till really I graduated. I, I got older. So what I could, if I disagree with you on that? Why? Well, because I'm in the house. At least I'm in the house with them. Well, true. I disagree with you because you impersonated him. What do you mean? You told me a time when you would do impersonations. Oh yeah. And they'd go, Matt, do dad, oh, do God. dad, and he goes, yeah. Yeah, well, I observed Do me. It. Yeah, I, I would observe him. <laughs> so I definitely, that's what I'm saying. And, and, I was in the and house. you said you did the impersonation and he didn't even laugh. He's just like. He, no, he did. He said, he goes, he didn't laugh, but he goes, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. he, used to, he used to always do. But yeah, I observed him. So I, I guess, you know, you could say I, I knew him, but I didn't have really any interactions with him, but I could watch him. His big thing was, um was. Jesus H. Christ, Margaret. <laughs> the hell are you doing? <laughs> yeah. And he just, everybody was an idiot. Yeah. He was. Well, he, see, and that, to me, that was, so, like, I didn't even get into this in the last video, but that was the part that I wanted in a relationship, because the relationship I had with my dad was pretty close, is I wanted Winter to know like, what I'm thinking, and, like, I wanted to be close enough to where she would make the thoughts of, oh, I already know what you're thinking, Dad. Right. You know, and, and we've actually kind of gotten to that point, even though we're we're kind of distant, but she does kind of know what I'm I'm thinking sometimes. She'll tell me, oh, I only did that because I'm sure that's what you wanted me to do. You know, and I'm like, okay, that's cool. Right. <laughs> that comes to me, that that was the that was the threshold I thought of getting to know someone. Impersonation is to me is the ultimate compliment of knowing someone because if you impersonated, like when you told me that story, right. I thought I'm like, man, cause I, like I tell you, when I went to jail, I thought I was a horrible dad. I kept saying, I am a horrible father. I'm a horrible. So like, I'm going to have to work from that point. I got to work right from being a horrible dad, you know, and I see you getting upset cause I know what you're thinking about what <laughs> your son. Oh no! Yeah, that's that. That he's gone. That's, that's over. I, I, and that hurts. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't. I, I. I. I don't even think about him that much anymore because now I'm at the point now where he doesn't even respond to my, to my, um, my texts. Well, here's the last time I was. It was. I think it was Christmas or Thanksgiving, and Kayla, my my ex wife, said. Do you and Jess want to come over for Thanksgiving or something like that? And I said, um, yeah, won't Cass be there? And he always says, like, if he shows up, I'm leaving. And she goes, yeah, but I thought it'd be an opportunity. You could text him and you could you could ask him if he would be okay with it. And I so I texted him. I said, hey, what are, you, what are your thoughts on me coming by with my girlfriend to, and having Thanksgiving dinner with you guys? And he, his response was, Find something else to do. <laughs> find someone else to have. Yeah. Find someone else to have a Thanksgiving dinner with. I want to say it was Thanksgiving or it was New Year's. Find something else to do with your wow. New Year's or something. I mean, that was it. Keep in mind, in December, every day I send people um, a Christmas song. I didn't get one. Oh, that's right. Never mind. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, so I was sending him every single day, and you know, so and I know he gets them, like you know, because I'll talk to you know Kayla, and she'd say, "Hey, have you you heard from you know." You heard from Matt lately? He'd go, well, nobody sends me these damn songs every day. What's wrong with this guy? When's he going to get a hint? Like, it's just, you know, she's like, well, you could block him. He's like, no, nah, I, I should. I should. You know, but he doesn't. So we'll that's, see. That's that's an opening. That's that's an opening. That's, please. That's an opening. It, it's, 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 it's hard. It's weird. It hurts. You know, but I like, I just, for me, I just endured. I said, okay. Like you're doing, I just yeah. you're like okay, beat it, beat it, get it out of you because it's it because oh, well, if, if if he didn't want to hear from you, he'd block you. Oh, listen, it went on forever. Like there was like I was texting him like every day, every other day, and it was nothing but just vile coming back. You're a piece of garbage. You're a scumbag. You're this. You're that. And I would come back and I'd say, I love these little talks we have. <laughs> and he's like, fuck you, you know. And <laughs> and then I one time I remember he was we were we were going back and forth. And I said, and he's like, you know, you this, you're that, you this. And I go, I mean, I said, listen, I get it. You're upset. I said, but let's be honest. If I'm half the person that you think I am, I said, do you really think that these insults are going to affect me in any way? I mean, let's you have be too honest. Many, you, you have too many great lines. I mean, <laughs> you, sometimes you got to let like, them know. Do you really think that I'm on the ground crying right now, yeah. my eyes out? Because, you know, you're. <laughs> if I'm the person you think I am, this doesn't bother me. <laughs> Like, you know, if I can have, those are great lines. Listen, if every two weeks I can have a guy to go see my mom say, you know, strip your clothes down, bend over, spread your cheeks. Let me look in your asshole. You know, then basically it's like, you can't humiliate me. (laughs) (laughs) I can't. You think, well, you think I'm going to get to the next level. That's beneath me. Yeah. You got to get to the next level. All right. Let's roll. I got to get out of here. Oh, all right. What are we doing? Yeah. Outro. Outro. Oh, and, and. I don't like the word that the term intro. You don't like outro. Either? Outro's okay. You know that, like that was a movie. That was outro? a yes. That intro? was a weird, weird British sex. Like it was British. You know, how to, like back in the eighties, British movies had a lot of nudity in them. That was a weird movie called Outro. I swear I to look God. that up. You know what I want to watch? Is it poor, poor Jess, bro. I make her watch horrible movies. Some of the movies where I'm like, this is an amazing movie. Let's rent it. And then we rent it. And I'm like, oh, that movie was horrible. Like, I remember that movie being uh, Space Odyssey 2001. Have you watched that? It's fucking three and a half hours long. It's horrible. Is it? I don't think I've ever seen it. I just hear about it. It could, Because everybody says how amazing it is. What, what about? And um, it would be amazing. I want to re-edit it. I was. I told just. I said. I wish I had this kind of time because I would like to take that and trim off an hour. Well, it's maybe it's maybe it's two hours and forty minutes, or is it three? Hours? Anyway, I could trim off two hours of that movie, and it would be amazing. The problem is they built these elaborate um, models, and th- instead of saying, "Hey, we're going to build it, and we're going to show you a quick clip like a normal movie of this," oh, they take you they, through, we, and they play the music, and it's like, "Oh wow, they are proud of this." Yeah. Oh, they're proud. Oh, they're. Pr- Are you serious? Is this a minute and a half? Are we? Oh my God! They're still going. No. They, up, yeah, they, go they the take you. They take you through back. the hallways yeah. of the. Yes, I remember that. It's I did ridiculous. see part of that movie. It's rid- the concept is great, and and if you trimmed it down to where it was an hour and twenty minutes, or maybe just an hour and ten minutes, it would be a good movie. How was the computer space odyssey? Yeah, yeah. yeah well, you mean how? H A L, right? Yeah. It, it's. Uh, what did I say? How? You said the computer space odyssey. No, I said how was the computer? Oh, and you said you mean how? And I'm like, yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Oh, no um, um, yeah. Um, I'm sorry, Dave. I yeah. can't do that. Open how? The pod, open, open the pod pods. doors, Hal. <laughs> open the pod door. How? I'm not going to argue with you. You know, I'm Richard sorry, Pryor did Dave. a spoof on that. Oh God, it's it so oh, good. Open the well, pod doors, Hal. So another one I was thinking about renting was um, Brazil. Do you remember Brazil? No. It was a British. Uh, movie called Brazil um, just about bureaucracy and like literally like somebody they punch in the wrong number and ruin this guy's life and it's like the whole movie what do you mean like somebody punches in the wrong number and they decide this person's like a criminal and then so like the police come and they chase him and they it's a whole I think I have the premise right it's like the whole and it's basically like saying look because you know bureaucracy is so the bureaucracy is so overblown there was no way to even correct the mistake so they t- 
torment this guy his whole life because somebody punched it in a six instead of a three, you know, that kind of thing. So, and it's just about how just overblown society is and how overbuilt everything is. Yes. And it's, but I would love to watch that movie because I think I, I may have it wrong. Somebody in the comment section will be like, you're an idiot. That's not what it's about at all. But the point is I remember watching it once and remember thinking, wow, this is a great movie, but I'd love to go back and watch it. And I'll probably be wrong. I'll be like, it's not what it's about. And it's a horrible movie. You know, it's a great movie to watch that you would think is a horrible movie. It's Casablanca. If you watch Casablanca, you don't even know it's in black and white, bro. It's such a great movie. I don't think I've ever seen that one either. And, and when you watch it, you'll realize like as they're talking, you're like, oh, my God. There are so many amazing lines that you know the lines. You just don't know where they're from. Like there are all these, you know, round up the usual suspects. Casablanca. Um, what was another one is uh, Played Again, Sam. Yeah, well, I, Casablanca. I know that's from Casablanca. Um, this is the start of a beautiful relationship. Yeah. Casablanca. Like, like there's like, as they go, those are the first ones that come to mind. But as you watch it, you're, you're like, wow. That is, wow. That is it a love story or is yeah. it a detective? We'll always have Paris. Yeah. I Casablanca. Yeah. Like there's like, like you go and you're like, oh my God. Like there's all these amazing lines. Of, of the movie I'm dying to see is um, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. May just watched it the other day. That was a, a good matter movie. of fact. I, I think I bought it. I might have rented it because I that's remember a, that was a good movie. It was a it was a great movie. Yes, it was. Um, you realize how just bad the sets are and stuff. You kind of oh, realize yeah. like, but what about when? Because I want to see when he made the so like I just wanted to. There were parts because I've only seen it once. I'm gonna tell you another movie I've only seen one time that I wanted to go back and check out. I saw it on Netflix. AI. That was horrible. In in, in the in in the theater, it was horrible. It might be amazing now. It it the the con. Well, it was one kid who thought he was real. Yes, they built him so that he would think he, he was real. No, he and he no no he felt he was in love. He actually no no connected he connected with he, the mother. Oh yeah, remember? And he was like, and then they then because her son, her son oh, was yes. in a coma, and then he comes out of it. And they don't really get along. And so he was a, he's supposed to be a brother. God, it's been so long. I haven't I only saw that once. You know what he was? He was like, who a, was who was the robot? What well, that wasn't Johnny Depp, was it? The no. robot that was the lover. He no, was no, the no. the Jude Law. Jude, Jude Law was that's right. He was the gigolo robot. Hi, ladies. <laughs> um, hold on. Did I did I buy where did he oh man, I wanted to see that movie again. I saw it one time. I think it was a... Uh, it was a prison movie or something like when I first went to prison, like at Coleman. Oh, bro. L listen to the movies I have. L let me tell you. Let me read my movie list. OK. Valkyrie with um, right with uh, Tom um, with Tom Cruise. Um, it's about the. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Of, 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 yes. Hitler. Yeah. Any given Sunday. That's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, uh, Any given Sunday. Yeah. Uh, it's amazing. No. Have you seen it? Yes. Of course. I own it. I own it. Okay. Moonfall. Horrible oh. movie. This is recent. Oh, Outlander. No, Outland. It's just called Outland. Sean Connery is a like a, a police officer on, Never seen it. on um uh Io, which is one of the moons around Jupiter, and they're mining. Um The Martian. Oh, with him with Matt making Damon. those plant yeah, those plants. Ah, that was that was all right. That's like gravity. I loved crap. Okay, look, wait, old. That's a uh, Shinlon. What's his name? The guy that did uh, the seven. Buff. No, the guy that did uh, the seven seven cent or seven senses or six cents or something like that. Oh yeah, Shyla LaBuff or something or what? Yeah. What was his name or Shylock? Night Night something. I can never say his name. Anyway, um, oh, baby, uh, baby driver, Solo. Ooh, wait, the road. Han Solo. Yeah, D the road. Do you remember the road? That was a book. A, well, I read that book. Tw uh, is that a movie? Of course, it's great. Not as good as the book, obviously. But ooh, listen, that's th the guy that did um, uh, No Country for Old Men. Yeah. Escape for uh, Escape from New York with um, Kurt Franklin. Kurt, Kurt Russell. Franklin. Kurt, Kurt Russell. Russell. <laughs> Wait, Planet of the Apes, uh, uh, the nineteen sixty nine or sixty eight version, the original. Ooh, ooh, um, The Big Short, Layer Cake. Great movie, Lord of War, um, Reddick, The Chronicles of Reddick, Reddick, 
Dune, the new one. The Last of the Mohicans. Wait, Four Weddings and a Funeral. It's a great movie. Wait, uh, Live, Wait, Die, Repeat, Edge of Tomorrow. That is that is actually my favorite movie. Which? Which one? Live, Die, Re- um, um, Edge, of, Edge tomorrow. of Tomorrow. It's a great movie, right? Tom Cruise. Yes. I forget the chick's name, but she's amazing looking. Um, well, a Star Do is I have Born. something on my face? So, no, go ahead. <laughs> a Star is Born. I may just watch Harry Met Sally. When Harry Met Sally. Oh, that's a good movie. That's a good movie. Well, seven. Oh, that's yeah. classic. Have you ever seen that? I think so a long time ago. The cult classic. Oh, my God. Morgan Freeman yeah. and um, at their best. Yeah. Only the, the, to me, the worst part is when Brad Pitt's acting like he's crying. What's in the box? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought that was I thought he did a horrible job. It's like, oh, oh, come on, Brad. Like, Brad, do that again, man. That was hor- I, I thought it was great. It's a great movie. What's in the box? What, watch how he says that line. Right. Have you seen it? Yeah. I own it. Watch how he says that line. That. Watch um, how he says that's the worst acting ever. Jack Reacher. <laughs> Wait, Night and Day. You ever seen that? Oh my God, yes. Are you a Tom Cruise fan? I, I mean, he's pretty good. He's, he's like five foot seven. That is a hilarious movie. Uh, um, uh, we got uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, I like that one. Alien. Uh, Which the second one? No, this is. Uh, well, I have Alien, the first one, and the- this is Covenant. Covenant? Yes. And then I got Hustle, uh, Hustlers. Wait. I haven't seen that Hustlers. one. Hustlers. Yeah. The, the, it's got Jennifer Lopez in it. Um, it's, a, it's a true story. Fight Club. What's the one rule of Fight Club? There's, I'm not going to talk about it. <laughs> um, romancing the Stone. Ah. Uh, of course. Uh, Joan, Joan Wilder. Yeah. Joan Wilder. <laughs> Wait. Uh, um, uh, Sakaro, Sakaro, uh, the day of Salah. Sol- I don't fucking know. I can't read. What was the romancing the stone? What was the follow up? Yeah, there wasn't a second one, wasn't there? Jewel, was it Jewel of the Nile? No, wasn't there a second one? Yeah, I think yeah. it was Jewel of the Nile. What about the uh, Blade Runner? Oh, Blade Runner. Uh, Man, I'm glad he said that. 2049. I'm. You know what? I've been meaning to watch that. Blade Runner was a good movie. Yeah. When they're doing all those interviews of the robots, yeah, like, yeah, that was um, uh, Harrison Ford. I got Thor. I got Ender's Game. Ah, no. Harrison Ford was in that too. The grumpy old man. Um, what about uh, American Made? Tom Cruise. I have a lot of Tom Cruise. I, yes. It's weird. Can you close this out so I, I can just go without him closing? I it keep out? going, bro. I love movies. <laughs> I keep going. Well, I got, I got it because I got to pick up Winter and I World gotta, War Z. Oh yeah, I, I don't think I've seen all of that yet. Oh, bro, you gotta watch it. It's 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 it's. First of all, I don't like the zombies. They're way. I like my zombies slow. You don't like the fast zombies. I like the idea that maybe I can make it. I'm not beating these guys. <laughs> There's no way. All right. See, I got another missed call. Ah. All right. Hey, I pre- read what she says. Who's this? Tammy. She's going off. I thought it was your day off. Bro, I, I all I pray for is to come here and not deal with that. I, I don't listen. I I know how to not deal with that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> hey, it's Matt Cox. Edit that too, please. <laughs> no, don't. No. So, did you see that? Yes, did I did. Those. That? Damn, that's freaking Popeye. That's uh, <laughs> that's um, uh, th uh, tht. <laughs> so, all right. Hey, it's, buff. <laughs> hey, it's Matt. Co- yeah, buff. Exactly. <laughs> oh. It's. I want to say it's not too late, but it, it is. Too it's late. probably it's too late. late. All right. Hey, it's Matt Cox. <laughs> I don't, why am I saying it's Matt? All right. Listen, I appreciate you guys watching. Check out my trailers for my book. Please join my Patreon. It's it's like ten bucks. It's nothing. It's ten dollars. All these guys leave comments in the comment section, like, "Bro, you're awesome. You're so cool. You're the." It's ten dollars. It's ten dollars. Uh, it's you know like you're not even gonna miss it <laughs> all right i appreciate it thank you for watching check out zach's channel also zach has a cash app that you can uh, donate to the link is in the description the link is in every single description of every video on his channel which is called which is black zach also the link to black zach's channel is in the description i really appreciate you guys watching thank you very much i have a bunch of books check out my books They're amazing.
It doesn't sound like I'm being humble. Thank you. Using forgeries and bogus identities, Matthew B. Cox, one of the most ingenious con men in history, built America's biggest banks out of millions. Despite numerous encounters with bank security, state, and federal authorities, Cox narrowly, and quite luckily, avoided capture for years. Eventually, he topped the U.S. Secret Service's most wanted list and led the U.S. Marshals, FBI, and Secret Service on a three-year chase while jet-setting around the world with his attractive female accomplices. Cox has been declared one of the most prolific mortgage fraud con artists of all time by CNBC's American Greed. Bloomberg Businessweek called him the mortgage industry's worst nightmare, while Dateline NBC described Cox as a gifted forger and silver-tongued liar. Playboy magazine proclaimed his scam was real estate fraud, and he was the best. Shark in the Housing Pool is Cox's exhilarating first-person account of his stranger-than-fiction story. Available now on Amazon and Audible. Bent is the story of John J. Boziak's phenomenal life of crime. Inked from head to toe, with an addiction to strippers and fast Cadillacs, Boziak was not your typical computer geek. He was, however, one of the most cunning scammers, counterfeiters, identity thieves, and escape artists alive, and a major thorn in the side of the U.S. Secret Service as they fought a war on cybercrime. With a savant-like ability to circumvent banking security and stay one step ahead of law enforcement, Boziak made millions of dollars in the international cyber underworld with the help of the Chinese and the Russians. Then, leaving nothing but a John Doe warrant and a cleaned-out bank account in his wake, he vanished. Boziak's stranger-than-fiction tale of ingenious scams and impossible escapes, of brazen run-ins with the law and secret desires to straighten out and settle down, makes his story a true crime con game that will keep you guessing. Bent, how a homeless teen became one of the cybercrime industry's most prolific counterfeiters. Available now on Amazon and Audible. Buried by the U.S. government and ignored by the national media, this is the story they don't want you to know. When Frank Amadeo met with President George W. Bush at the White House to discuss NATO operations in Afghanistan, no one knew that he'd already embezzled nearly $200 million from the federal government, money he intended to use to bankroll his plan to take over the world. From Amadeo's global headquarters in the shadow of Florida's Disney World, with a nearly inexhaustible supply of the Internal Revenue Service's funds, Amadeo acquired multiple businesses, amassing a mega conglomerate. Driven by his delusions of world conquest, he negotiated the purchase of a squadron of American fighter jets and the controlling interest in a former Soviet ICBM factory. He began working to build the largest private militia on the planet, over one million Africans strong. Simultaneously, Amadeo hired an international black ops force to orchestrate a coup in the Congo while plotting to take over several small Eastern European countries. The most disturbing part of it all is, had the US government not thwarted his plans, he might have just pulled it off. It's insanity. The bizarre true story of a bipolar megalomaniac's insane plan for total world domination. Available now on Amazon and Audible. Pierre Rossini in the 1990s was a 20-something-year-old Los Angeles-based drug trafficker of ecstasy and ice. He and his associates drove luxury European supercars, lived in Beverly Hills penthouses, and dated Playboy models while dodging federal indictments. Then, two FBI officers with the Organized Crime Drug Enforcement Task Force entered the picture. Dirty agents willing to fix cases and identify informants. Suddenly, two of Rossini's associates, confidential informants working with federal law enforcement, were murdered. Everyone pointed to Rossini. As his co-defendants prepared for trial, U.S. Attorney Robert Mueller sat down to debrief Rossini at Leavenworth Penitentiary, and another story emerged. A tale of FBI corruption and complicity in murder. You see, Pierre Rossini knew something that no one else knew. The truth. And Robert Mueller and the federal government have been covering it up to this very day. 
Devil Exposed, a twisted tale of drug trafficking, corruption, and murder in the City of Angels. Available on Amazon and Audible. Bailout is a psychological true crime thriller that pits a narcissistic con man against an egotistical pathological liar. Marcus Shrinker, the money manager who attempted to fake his own death during the 2008 financial crisis, is about to be released from prison and he's ready to talk. He's ready to tell you the story no one's heard. Shrinker sits down with true crime writer Matthew B. Cox, a fellow inmate serving time for bank fraud. Shrinker lays out the details. The disgruntled clients who persecuted him for unanticipated market losses, the affair that ruined his marriage, and the treachery of his scorned wife, the woman who framed him for securities fraud, leaving him no choice but to make a bogus distress call and plunge from his multi-million dollar private aircraft in the dead of night. The $11.1 million in life insurance, the missing $1.5 million in gold. The fact is, Shrinker wants you to think he's innocent. The problem is, Cox knows Shrinker's a pathological liar and his story's a fabrication. As Cox subtly coaxes, cajoles, and yes, cons Shrinker into revealing his deceptions, his stranger-than-fiction life of lies slowly unravels. This is the story Shrinker didn't want you to know. Bailout, The Life and Lies of Marcus Shrinker. Available now on Barnes & Noble, Etsy, and Audible. Matthew B. Cox is a con man, incarcerated in the Federal Bureau of Prisons for a variety of bank fraud-related scams. Despite not having a drug problem, Cox inexplicably ends up in the prison's residential drug abuse program, known as RDAP, a drug program in name only. RDAP is an invasive behavior modification therapy specifically designed to correct the cognitive thinking errors associated with criminal behavior. The program is a non-fiction dark comedy which chronicles Cox's side-splitting journey. This first-person account is a fascinating glimpse at the survivor-like atmosphere inside of the government-sponsored rehabilitation unit. While navigating the treachery of his backstabbing peers, Cox simultaneously manipulates prison policies and the bumbling staff every step of the way. The program. How a con man survived the Federal Bureau of Prisons' cult of RDAP. Available now on Amazon and Audible. If you saw anything you like, links to all the books are in the description box.